This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Okay, so it's Friday, which means one thing, mail time. So I've got to tell you something that I absolutely love about my job pretty much every week. I get notifications from the P.O. Box that there's stuff in, so I go over there and I get free books all the time in the mail and zines and prints and things from viewers like you, which is why these have become some of my favorite videos to do. Without further ado, let's get to the mail. Okay, first up, we've got this little print. This comes to us from Chris from Minnesota, who writes, Ted, it's been a while. I sent you a darkroom print a number of years ago, and I thought I would send you a color image that I made last year. It's from a small town in Minnesota called Jordan, who can resist images with reflections in text. Thank you, Chris, this is awesome. Next up is a book from Richard James Palmer. This is called Honorable Lady, and Mr. Palmer writes, This project is based on my nan, who lives in Sunderland, UK, Northeast. I won't say too much about it, but it was all shot on medium format color film. It's a really nicely done book, but I want to read you the intro as I show it to you here. Anyway, he says in the book, Back in 2017, I started to photograph my nan in the council house that she lived in for 43 years in Plains Farm, Sunderland. While she was always my nan, our relationship was not by blood. Ron, her son, stepped in as my father raised me and my brother Oliver with my mother. Every Sunday, we would all visit nan, eating dinner together and watching Football Italia with my dad and granddad three generations together as Oliver and I played with toy cars three generations old. My granddad died in 2001 and Nan was suddenly alone. A sociable person who seemingly knew everyone around Sunderland, Nan's mobility worsened in 2017 and her resilience on family to help her with everyday tasks increased. Nan and I have always been close. My dad and brothers would always make jokes about me being the favorite. She was lonely at times, so I would ring to see how she was or pop around to see her. It was around this time that I began to make photographs with Nan. It occurred to me that Nan and her house, so full of personality and family history, would one day be no more than a memory. And while visiting her, I found a box containing the aforementioned toy cars gathering dust in her spare room. To a stranger, these are merely objects in a house, but to me, they are Nan's story and our story with Nan. In the process of telling this story, we became even closer. I wanted the images that I made with Nan to be personable and intimate, digging deeper and portraying her life in a true and honest way, a fitting tribute to an honorable lady. Richard, this is a beautiful book. I absolutely love how vulnerable it is. And what I hope people get as a takeaway from this is it's interesting in photography when you consider a portrait. Right, So you're going to shoot a portrait of somebody, and then when you dig deeper as an artist, you try to tell a story, say something about that person, make it representative. And I love the fact that we have a book here that really gives us a lot of that laid out. So this is really awesome. Richard, thank you for sending. It's incredible. Next up is a book from John Petro, and this is called Fossil Fuel Fossils. It is a collection of photographs of a peculiar and singular subject. And John writes, Ted, I very much enjoy and appreciate your art of photography videos. The topics you choose to discuss and your commentary are informative, inspirational, and humbling. I have been into photography since my junior year in high school in the mid-1960s. We subscribed to Life and Look magazines, and I was captivated by the photographs and the documentary work of Alfred Eisenstadt in particular. At the local library, I discovered the work of Depression-era photographers, Steichen's Family of Man and Frank's The Americans, among others, and it all cast a spell over me. Did I say humbling already? In any case, I love traveling back roads, both in the U.S. and abroad, and documenting with my camera the effects of the passing of time on the land and us. Enclosed is a self-published magazine that I put together dedicated to one very particular and unique, maybe odd subject that I can't resist stopping for in my travels, among them dozens of others. I hope you find it with some little interest and worth sharing. Regards, John. John, this is really nicely done. Thank you for sharing. It brings to mind, and at least for me, a lot of Ed Ruscha and maybe even a little William Eggleston influence in there, and I absolutely love it. One thing I want to add to this conversation, because we've been talking a little bit about the mindset behind putting a book or a zine together. And I hope that you guys note that the last two books that I've shown are on singular subjects. In other words, they're just an exploration of one simple idea. I think this is really effective. A lot of times people feel like a book we're going to put together and it's going to be this mass from my archive and my catalog. Well, it doesn't have to be. It can be really on just one focused subject. Really nicely done, John. Thank you for sharing. So the next two books that I want to share with you, and I swear I did not plan this. When I do these mail videos, literally I go through the stacks, I grab about five items or so 
that I want to share. I open them here and you see what I randomly picked. And I happen to pick two more books here that are related to this whole idea of a singular kind of topic or subject. A little bit different because they have a little more variation to them, but it's interesting that this just is happened to be what I stumbled upon today. But real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our awesome sponsor who are the folks over at Squarespace. Listen, you need a website and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And and with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're gonna look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up is this beautiful zine called This Too Shall Pass. It comes to us from Brendan Morrison. He wrote me a personal note in here, uh, mentions that this is his first printed photography zine and all the photos in this zine were shot on a cell phone during his battle with an unknown lung condition that resulted in a double lung transplant. So this is pretty deep. I do want to share with you the description that he included here with the book, which reads, these photos were shot during a period of my life when change was constant and growth was inevitable. I went from being a kid who just left the nest to being thrust into a sudden adulthood as I navigated the medical system to fight for my life. In my late teens, athleticism and adventurous pursuits were at the top of my priority list. When my abilities in these areas were lost, I channeled that focus into my creative side. As I was forced to slow down physically, the world around me narrowed along with my subject matter. In contrast to earlier days, when I sought to make art in hard to reach places at the top of peaks, I shifted to capturing beauty on a smaller, more accessible level. When shooting these Images, I had no intent to publish them in printed form. The work that I put in over the past few months in assembling and organizing these photos has been cathartic to say the least. Lately, I have entered a new chapter of my life. I am far enough out of my lung transplant and the illness preceding it, and I am able to find some perspective. I can look back on those few years and process what I went through and the impacts that it had on me. From the outside looking in, most people seem to think that I was handling my situation really well. In many ways I was, but in hindsight it's clear that I was in shock a lot of the time and shutting out my emotions. Although that survival mode got me through those times and allowed me to stay logical and decisive, my lack of emotional processing has come back to bite me in various ways. About a year after my transplant, many of the emotions that I should have felt years prior starting to come to the surface. Luckily, I have worked through with a therapist for a number of years now to process and come to terms with the trauma that occurred in my early 20s. One of the skills that I owned in therapy was mindful meditation and the practice of staying present and allowing thoughts to come and go. One of the principles that I latched onto was the idea of viewing everything as temporary. It allowed me to zoom out on the dark times that I was in and look for myself and the world around me to see how finite it all is. For some reason or another, I found great comfort in this perspective, and that outlook continues to help me appreciate my life as the fleeting blip in time that it is and has made me enjoy every minute that I have so much more. I hope that this body of work provides a glimpse into the period of my life that molded me into the person I am today. So, Brennan, I I am not going to lie, this is one of the heavier, more emotionally involved things that anyone has ever sent to me, but it's a really fascinating story. I'm glad you're doing much better. I would love to know more about this, actually, because you clearly were hit with a situation where it completely changed the types of things that you could shoot, and it represents that period in your life. And I'm wondering if being able to shoot was 
somewhat therapeutic in all of that. Anyway, this is really incredible. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the work that's in here. Thank you for sharing. So I have one more book that I want to share, but that last one kind of caught me off guard, and I want to talk about this just a little bit and maybe riff on this idea. First of all, hats off to Brennan for being brave enough to share that with us. That is a heavy concept and a really well-executed book. It's absolutely beautiful. And I feel like, for me at least, this represents one of the frustrations when making videos with an audience. I have been making videos for a long time. In fact, it's been 14 years come this October. This YouTube channel will be 14 years old. Actually, I started over on iTunes as a podcast. It was a video podcast back in the day. Moved everything a little bit later over to YouTube, and here we are. And I love doing this, and one of the things that's driven me to do it for so long has been you guys. It's my audience. I am very appreciative of my audience. And let me give you an example. It's these male videos. I have not seen another YouTube channel of any topic have an audience Audience that sends stuff in that's this higher level of sophistication that's worth sharing and it's really interesting and you can come up with conversations around and that's kind of what Brendan's book has done for me. What's very frustrating about doing a YouTube channel like this is it's a one-way conversation, right? So you feel like I'm talking to you because that's what a video does, but actually at the time I'm filming this, I'm just talking into a camera lens. There's nobody else in the room. And so when work like this comes in that I have questions about and I want to know more about and I, it's just trying to find a way to, I mean, I just flat out asked. I would like to know more about what photography meant in that context, and it's just impossible to do here. But that does lead me to a few other thoughts that I do want to relay. So the reality is that you and me and everybody else in this audience, well, we all come from different places. We all have different backgrounds. We have different things that make us beautiful human beings that we bring to life. And that's what's interesting about photography and seeing that work, because that is a way of representing that. That's one of the things that I have always been driven and passionate about in photography in general. All the people that I look up to, um, the artists that I've interviewed for this show, I mean, I've been really lucky where I've gotten into a position where I've gotten to meet my heroes. Uh, I've got this stuff with Ralph Gibson that is slow in the process. We're about to finally have it done, but that's a huge deal for me to be able to finally do that and have conversations with a lot of these people. And that's the one thing that brings us together is that we're using this visual communication or this visual medium to communicate. It is visual communication. And that is what's so beautiful about all this because it's I wouldn't say it's a secret language. It's a language that I think everybody, especially human beings today, really have a grasp of. Like for instance, you know, everybody shoots pictures with their phones, whether they're interested in photography or not, they are communicating visually and we're in an image related world that kind of forces you to think in those terms. But what really makes this powerful to those of us that are interested in learning photography and learning how to pursue this method of communication, it's just an enormously powerful gift that it's there for those that want to take it. And I see this in all of the work that has been sent in. And I, I know I'm taking a book and I'm, I'm gonna save it for the next video, but I thought it would just be important to kind of acknowledge that because that last book really brought that to mind, the last scene that I showed. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Until then, later.